life and matter are inseparable. Well, it is quite a sweeping statement, and it's an assertion made by Kurupa Malaji Jinrajidaza in his book, The First Principles of Theosophy, uh, and that's a book I would recommend to everybody. Now, how does he arrive at this? Uh, he begins by citing um, the scientific analogy of energy and matter. Now, uh, matter all matter contains energy, um, or can be described as trapped energy. They are inseparable, and one is not the product of the other. So moving that to um, life and matter. Uh, matter contains life, all matter contains life. Life and matter are inseparable, and one is not the product of the other. Now, to justify this, um, this statement, um, let's go to the Theosophical view of evolution first. Theosophy maintains that evolution is driven by consciousness seeking to find expression and also that there is no dead matter in the universe. There's, everything technically has consciousness, rocks, water, um, the mineral kingdom has consciousness, every atom has consciousness, everything is therefore, you could argue, has life. Now, theosophy makes no distinction between organic and inorganic matter in terms of consciousness, but it does in terms of complexity and complexity is really the levels at which consciousness is expressing itself. Now if we look at um, the planet, the elements on the planet, um, minerals, water and gases and these have combined with the energy of the sun or the rays of the sun to give rise to organic life. Therefore the mineral kingdom, plus the, uh, the energy of the sun, the rays of the sun, must contain the potential for what scientists call life as we know it. 